Hi, my name is Mike and welcome to my vlog about football in general and Burnley FC in particular. A vlog that this week saw Manchester United concede a last minute penalty to lose away at West Ham and thought, yep, that's what happens to teams at the lower end of the Premier League table when they're away to the big guns. Now, I'm not going to talk too much about Eric Ten Hag, but he's been finally put out of his misery. And I will note that Ru van Vistelroy is feeling more and more confident that he made the right decision in turning down the turf more hot seat in the summer. I'm sure he's the man to sort everything out where Tim Hag couldn't and Ralph Rangier couldn't and Nolly Gunnar Solskjaer couldn't and Louis van Gaal couldn't and Jose Mourinho couldn't and David Moyes couldn't and I'm missing one, aren't I? Anyway, two things at Turf War at Burnley. Football is a capricious game. Um, when you, th you make the changes you think you're going to get and the success doesn't automatically follow. Nil-nil at home to bottom of the table QPR. And um, a perfect example of why you could never solve the problem that is football. Scott Parker made the changes to the starting lineup that everyone had been shouting for. Josh Lauren in at the middle. Josh Brownhill pushed up to be a sort of number 10. And it kind of worked. It kind of worked for the first half. I thought the Clarets were pretty damn good against a solid, resilient QPR side who, to be fair, had come for a point but weren't doing the kind of shithousery and game management that you would expect with a, uh, a side in their position. It was, I thought, a pretty good first half. Uh, Clarence created some chances, looked pretty dangerous. There was one particularly nice passing move that was foiled by a superb last-ditch tackle. QPR went in at nil-nil, and I guess both managers had the half-time team talk of keep that up, lads, keep doing what you're doing. And QPR came out and did. And Burnley kind of did. We kind of reverted to time. We kind of reverted to having not much in the way of ideas for once. Well, the subs kind of didn't work because, well, our creative players were already on the pitch and that wasn't working at all. I guess from a tactical point of view, I mean, you saw Conor Roberts coming in. I thought he was, i am not said before, not the biggest fan of Conor Roberts. Well worth his man of the match on Saturday. Uh, bustling around, joining the attack, moving around kind of like free roaming because QPR were not offering a goal threat. So he was moving forward and creating play and linking up. I thought it was absolutely excellent. Um, oh, and there was also that bit where he was, you know, he went in for a, a hard tackle. The QPR player went in for a hard tackle. There was another hard tackle. The ref was right there. They let it all play on. And it occurred to me that back in the Premier League, that would have been a whistle. It would have been VAR. It would have been controversy. And you'd have had bodies rolling around like the aftermath of the Somme. Thank God we're so out of the Premier League with all its stupid conspiracy theory and slow-mo replay and fake goddamn controversy anyway anyway so second half yeah it kind of petered out and this is the problem i mean this is a perfect example of why burnley fc are in second place and fans of burnley fc are not particularly happy we've now scored three goals in our last four home games and one of those was a penalty that's against teams that have been in the bottom three or four. Uh, the nil nils have been against teams that have been the bottom three or four of the division in Preston and now QPR, and we have not broke them down. Yet we are in second place because we go away and we play like this, and then we bore the opposition to sleep, and then we nick a goal. And that keeps us in second place. Somehow, because that's what the championship is. Yet it's just not entertaining football. And it's weird to say we're not happy despite the fact that we're second. And I can't quite figure out what we should be saying or what I should be saying in this vlog. Am I happy with the way that we are playing? Absolutely not. Would I want to be second at the end of the season? Yeah, absolutely would. Do I want to kind of sit through this in order to get to that? I don't know. Anyone who knows me knows I'm not exactly the time to be stuck for words all that often, but I'm kind of looking at this vlog and going, what exactly do I say? Because whatever I do, if, I, if I'm positive, I'm kind of ignoring some of the problems. If I talk about the problems, then I'm focusing on the negative and ignoring the results of where we are in the division. 
I just don't know what to think about this season. I just don't know what to think about this. Well, I don't think it's the team. I don't think it's the players. I just think it's the style they are being asked to play. But Scott Parker, as I've said before, has a job to get us up. So this is currently working and we're sitting there going, am I supposed to be happy? Am I supposed to be upset? I mean, people were booing at the end and then covering themselves going, oh, we were booing the QPR performance. QPR did what they had to do with a minimum of game management. QPR, I have no problems at all with the way they played against Burnley on Saturday. They were resilient, they worked hard, and they earned their point. Not a problem there. We Did we do enough to win it? Probably. Maybe. I don't know. And this is where the contradiction is. I've got kind of sat here going, i got to do a vlog on this, and I have no idea what I'm going to say. I have no idea what I'm going to review or how I'm going to feel, because I guess ultimately, because these vlogs are about how I feel about matches and how I feel about Burnley Football Club. They are not in-depth tactical analysis and all that kind of thing. They're just about how I feel at the game, and how I feel is conflicted. I feel contradictory. You know, a nil-nil draw, they played well, but I didn't feel like applauding the team off the pitch because I was just kind of like, annoyed. Yet we're in second place. And that's, I don't know, because people keep comparing it to, to VK and, oh, we have more points than we did under VK. And again, that's true, but it's ignoring... 28 games unbeaten, ten, uh, winning 10 in a row. You know, so it's not going to look like that for much longer. So don't use it as defensive because that's focusing on the minor and ignoring the big picture. And if I turn around and go, well, I focus on the nil nil and unable to be build QPR, beat QPR in a in a game, then I'm ignoring the bigger picture of us being in second place. So I just don't know. And I don't know what to think. And I don't know particularly what to say this week. Do we, you know, is it going to continue like this? We've got two games coming up, uh, Millwall and West Brom. Now, they are going to be tough games. They're going to be difficult games. But if we play like we did at Sheffield Wednesday, and like we did away at Hull, then maybe we'll come away with, say, you know, four points or whatever. And then... That's good results, but the whole game was just not entertaining football in any way, shape or form. And Sheffield Wednesday was the case of us taking advantage of a big screw-up and then controlling the game from there. And if the other team doesn't make that screw-up, then where the heck are we? So, short one this week, because I don't really have anything to say, because I don't know what to say. I don't want to be discouraging. I don't want to be particularly encouraging. I'm not happy. I'm not sad. I'm not. I'm frustrated, but accepting. I, that's just contradictory right from the start. Are we boring? Yes. Are we successful? Yes. Could it improve? Yes. Will it improve? Don't know. Is it the player's fault? Not really. Is it the manager's fault? Doing his job. Who you know? Do we take away positive? CJ O'Reilly, uh, CJ Egan O'Reilly, looking better and better every week. James Trafford, six clean sheets so far this season. I don't know. I don't know. But what I do know is, I'm gonna watch the highlights of the Millwall game. I'll watch the West Brom game. It's Thursday night, so it'll be on TV. So I'll watch that. And then we got Swansea on Remembrance Day weekend. And uh, Swansea so far have scored eight goals in their 12 games. So, don't know about you, but I think I might be taking a book. <laughs>